Good morning, folks. <clears throat> this is Deb Delapiana with your chain reaction report for today. You know, we're going to talk about um, the Republican Party today. I, I have to say, um, that I've come around to a different perspective. Uh, at one time, I was essentially putting uh, the Democrats and the Republicans in the same useless bucket, uh, rolling them all together, and considering uh, both parties uh, one as evil as the other. Uh, you know, I was, I was wrapped up. I got caught up in the same shit people are caught up now, uh, where you get wrapped up in the rhetoric out there and you stop actually looking at things objectively. You stop vetting information. Um, I should have known better coming from a journalist background, um, and I no longer do that. I no longer climb on the gravy train uh, and ride the wave. It is what has caused me to change, become ungovernable, uh, from a group that purports to support direct democracy. I, I no longer feel like the American people have the mental acumen uh, to govern themselves. I certainly would rather fight this system at this point than turn the writing of legislation and the maintaining of people's rights over to the American people. And that's just based on what I've seen. Okay? I, I am now totally a rational thinker. I, I no longer think in an aggregate um, about a movement, I think in increments about what makes sense, okay? And now, you know, what I've seen is the propagandists in the GOP and on the right have enmeshed the left wing totally in their rhetoric and their bullshit and have focused the American people away from a pandemic that has killed 678,000 Americans now, you know, into a belief that natural immunity is going to stop this thing. I've watched as people make the big tyranny of our time mask wearing, something that has been done for decades, centuries. I've watched as the Republicans and the right-wingers demonize vaccines which have been around forever and actually which have saved millions of people, not killed millions of people. And by the way, let me just say this. I am fully aware that some people who get vaccines will have adverse reaction. It is illogical and childish to think for a nanosecond that any company can manufacture a vaccine that is used around the world on billions of people and can take into account everybody's body reaction to something. It's ridiculous to think that. It's childish in and of itself. And that's what makes me worry about turning this government over to the people is the childishness with which the American people think. So let's talk about the GOP. Let's talk about what they may have done while Donald Trump was in office and certainly since he has left office, since he lost the election and he did lose the election. No one stole the election from him. Let's talk about what he has done and what the GOP has done to benefit the American people. And I'm going to contend that they have nothing to benefit the American people. I want to try something here, so I'm, hold on a minute. Sorry about that. I think I had too many lights on. As I said, I'm not Cecil B. DeMille, okay? I'm making videos here to try to get you information. So let's talk about this. We had a government in place 
under Donald Trump that completely botched this pandemic. We have people who are specialists in their field, doctors, people who have devoted their entire lives to um, research in the field of, you know, virology, um, researchers in science uh, who have worked their way up to work for the CDC and the World Health Organization, uh, the, you know, who, who have stated that after the first 100,000 deaths in the United States, this thing should never have spiraled out of control like this. And, you know, I fundamentally agree with them. You know, people can talk about this uh, having been um, like the flu, but it isn't like the flu. This is not the flu. COVID-19 is not like any virus that has ever been seen before. Regardless of its origin, regardless of whether it was in Wuhan, regardless of whether it came from a bat, this is a virus that nobody has ever experienced before in history. In the United States now, where we have the finest doctors, the finest research institutes, a shit ton of knowledge, we have lost more people to COVID-19 than we did to the flu pandemic of 1918. We have lost more Americans to COVID than the flu pandemic when we had none of this in place, no doctors that were trained like this, and certainly no laboratory facilities that looked anything like this. He, Donald Trump, downplayed this virus even though we had the virus and walked out of the fucking White House with an oxygen tank on. The Democrats, we're not discussing today, okay? They are not perfect. But you know something? I've come to realize that whenever there's 335 million people involved, we're never going to have a perfect government, even if, it's, even if it's in the people's hands. Do you seriously think all of the people are good? All of the Democrats aren't good. All of the Republicans aren't bad. But there's enough of them in aggregate that make them act badly. The Republican Party right now cares more about party loyalty than it does in the American people. Nobody in the Republican Party is stepping up and telling people to get a vaccine. They can't because the Republican Party is still in the control of Donald Trump and nobody's willing to buck him. Even though I can guarantee you the majority of the people in the Republican Party have been vaccinated on the taxpayer dollar. Okay? So what has the Republican Party done, both under Donald Trump and without him? Like it or not, I don't care whether you want to call what the Democrats are doing right now by looking at January 6th. You want to call it Kabuki Theater, you go right the fuck ahead and do that. Um, but what happened on January 6th cannot be tolerated. It cannot be downplayed, and it cannot be swept under the carpet. Now, the Republican Party had a chance to participate in this logically, okay? It had a chance to participate. They had come to an agreement in the House. They took it to the Senate. Mitch McConnell blocked it with the hope that everybody was just going to let it die. The Democrats did the right thing by not allowing it to die. The Democrats put two Republicans on that committee who are at least rational about what happened on January 6th. I do not agree at all with Liz Cheney on her stance on anything. I don't agree. She's not pro-LGBT. I am LGBT. But I agree with her on January 6th that allowing that to happen and being played off as some kind of, you know, minor event and the people in jail are political prisoners is not good for the GOP. And you have got to know that when Liz Cheney looks good, the party is smelly. There are people being subpoenaed now. They will be deposed. Do I think anything will happen to them? I don't think the Republican Party will allow anything happen to their own people. No, I don't. You know, and people can say that the Democrats won't do anything about this, but the fact of the matter is the Democrats don't work in a vacuum. Just like they couldn't get the Republicans to authorize this um, inquest once it got to the Senate, they can't force any penalties on any of the Republicans. It is right to look at what the Republicans were doing 
prior to this insurrection. It is right to look at Donald Trump and how he incited this. It is right to look at Rudy Giuliani. It is right to look at Josh Hawley. It is right to look at uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And it is right to look at Lauren Bobia, who we know, literally tweeted out the location of the Senate. What was happening there was a bunch of whipped up lunatics from the right, white supremacists, empowered by Donald Trump. That's another of his accounts. He has normalized white supremacy in America. What they did was break into the Capitol, which is not part of their rights. It is their right to stand outside for days if they want peacefully. It is not their right to break in. It is not their right to beat Capitol Police officers with sticks or to spray bear spray on them or to tell them this is the day they're going to die. It is not their right to break into the inner chamber to try to stop the certification of the election. And Ashley Babbitt was not a hero. She broke into the Capitol. She made that decision. She lives and dies with the consequence of that. No matter how the GOP wants to spin it, she is not a hero just because she served in the U.S. military. She is an insurrectionist who was breaking the law. If you think that the people breaking in to the Capitol didn't have nefarious ideas in mind, you're naive. Beyond belief. And if you don't think they're also a bunch of cowards, now they're turning around pointing at Donald Trump saying he made them do it. They're right about that, but they were stupid enough to take up that mantra, weren't they? Anytime you think that that party is about freedom, you ought to think twice. State by state by state, they have victimized women. Okay? They have literally stacked the Supreme Court so they can take away a woman's right to govern her own body and her own medical health care. Okay? The Supreme Court, without some kind of major legislation being passed will overturn Roe v. Wade. The Republicans can talk about Joe Biden stacking the Supreme Court. Joe Biden hasn't made one appointment yet. If he gets one appointment in his first four-year term, it'll be a miracle. Donald Trump... He made three appointments. He stacked the Supreme Court knowing exactly what was going on here. What have the Republicans done? They have spent millions of taxpayer dollars recounting to prove that Donald Trump won the election and that Joe Biden stole the election. What was once Russia is now China. Now they're trying to blame Joe Biden China for stealing the election from him. They just spent recounting Arizona. The ninjas that they hired just reaffirmed that Joe Biden won Arizona. Now, the state party chair in the GOP is calling for another count in Arizona. We have counts going in Pennsylvania. And now, Donald Trump has demanded that Governor Abbott recount Texas. We continue on and on and on because the GOP has ceded control of this party to a literal barking madman who has come out of reality television. I want you to think about that. Mitch McConnell has vowed that they will not raise the debt ceiling. Yet under the Republicans and Donald Trump, they suspended the debt ceiling for two years, gave massive tax cuts to billionaires, and increased the national debt by $7.8 trillion. They're trying to lay that now on someone else. The Afghanistan pullout, they're laying that on Joe Biden. The Afghanistan pullout was negotiated by Mike Pompeo and Donald Trump, and they only spoke to the Taliban. They literally 
only formed that withdrawal by speaking with a terrorist organization. They disavowed the Afghan government in place by doing so. I don't want to hear any more bullshit about Afghanistan from fucking anybody, whether it be Chris Hedges or anyone else out there. Joe Biden followed the dictates of the Trump administration who negotiated that pullout. End of story. I challenge somebody in this country, anyone, to tell me one positive thing that the GOP has done for the United States. I want to know one thing that the GOP has done for the American people. In Florida, you have a dictator named Ron DeSantis who is putting millions of people at risk. He has a death rate that is ridiculous from COVID. He went out and found himself a brand spanking new medical authority to a point who is continuing to put children at risk. Now it's going to be up to the parents whether or not they want to quarantine their COVID-infected children. Do you think parents are going to do that? Parents desperate for daycare? So it's going to be up to the parents to decide whether or not they should keep their COVID-infected child out of school, putting teachers, staff, and other students at risk. In a country where when my kids were little, I had to turn over their inoculations to get them into school because that's the right thing to do. It's called the public health. We don't have the rights to infect other people with our illnesses. None of us lives on an island. We all are interconnected here. I certainly would never be sending my children to school today. Never. Governor DeSantis doesn't believe in social distancing. In Texas, Governor Abbott is the same way. They have prevented the school districts from taking control of their districts by putting in laws that, you know, li literally make mask mandates illegal. That isn't about freedom. It's about political opportunism. These people do nothing that isn't politically opportunistic. The highest state death rate is in Mississippi right now, where they don't worry about COVID-19 because they believe in eternal life. Well, it's a good goddamn thing they do. Governor Tate of Mississippi is pro-life, but he's had 72 in-the-womb deaths from COVID-19. He's not pro-life. He's pro-politics. Wake up, okay? Wake up. I have made, literally over the past several weeks, I don't know how many videos. I have put all of the research in there. You can either avail yourself of this information and use it, or you can continue on your ignorant ways. It's entirely up to you. But really, don't try to sell me on freedom. Don't try to sell me on freedom. Don't try to sell me on individual freedom when we all live together on the same planet. Nobody is taking away your freedom. There is a move here to stop a pandemic. You want to talk about culling the population through the new world order? You're all doing a great job doing it yourselves by buying into this bullshit. 678,000 people dead in the United States from a virus that could have been brought under control And the reason this is being done is for political reasons and nothing else. I'm done here. You have a great day.